Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for December 11th, 2020. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about traveling and traveling safely with data, particularly with laptops, smartphones, and many other devices that has sensitive data on there that we may not want prying eyes to look at it as we're going through airport security. So, my name is Carl. Hi, this is Ahmad. And we're going to begin with how to safely travel with data to protect ourselves. So you want to get started? Yeah, so, you know, if, if you've been watching our channel, um, you've taken a few steps to protect yourself, you know, from protecting data on your devices or at rest or in, in use, and also in transit while it's, you know, traversing the internet or any type of network. But what if you actually have data on you on a physical device and that data is encrypted and you're traveling to another country? Mm -hmm. um, how and, and then what if you're subjected to search at the border? Do you know what how to protect that data? Do you know what steps that you can take? Do you know any laws or agreements or regulations that may protect you? Um, and that data that you have? And also, do you have an understanding on why some countries do not allow encrypted data in, in their countries? Um, it, you know, it, it's, it's a huge uh, national security issue, uh, bringing yeah. any type of data. Um, because, you know, it's, even on the internet, there are some data that it's not allowed and it's blocked, like any data like you may find to try to harm yourself or others. Right. Uh, if you go and you search uh, on the Internet for any of that type of data, you will probably not find much information because that data is mm -hmm. blocked. But if you're physically transferring that data. Right. So it, it works in, in 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 both ways. Right. It works in how can I protect that sensitive data that I have? Uh, what data can I travel with? Um, and what are some tips that I can have, you know, if I'm traveling with my laptop or my phone? And what can I do if I'm stopped for at the border for any type of search? Mm -hmm. um, Carl? Um, yeah, so most of the countries that will have the tru most trouble would be like Russia, China, and recently Australia. <laughs> um, those countries are very anti-encryption and have very high regulation on their uh, citizens. Um, so I think the first thing you should learn is to know what kind of rules and regulations are in each of those countries, especially with Australia. They, I think they recently passed a law where if a police officer comes up to you and you have encrypted data on you, you you're f going to be forced to decrypt it for them to look at. You basically have no way around protecting yourself on that that end. Um, so the first thing that I'd say is learn the regulations of the country that you're getting into, because there's very little leeway if you're not a citizen there, because the laws are usually there to, if there are any favorable outcomes, they're mostly there to protect the citizens. And since you're not most likely a citizen of that country you're visiting, you're, you're, uh, you're more likely to be forced to share data that you may not want to, but because you're not a citizen, you pretty much have to obligate to give them the data. Um, 
So let's if, if we go back to uh, that that new that new line. I, I don't know if it's Australia or New Zealand or both. It's Australia. Um, yeah. Australia. If data is unencrypted, mm -hmm. do I still have to provide it? Yes. So and so that means you, it's it doesn't matter what data you have, mm -mm. and you're stopped with or without cause. Yeah. You need well. You need they have to have some that. kind of cause, but since you're not a citizen there, most likely mm -hmm. they could just say, "Okay, our cause is you're not a citizen, so obviously you're here. You may not be up to any good because who knows? But if you're a citizen, you have to have a little bit of cause, but reading through that law, it's kind of vague on what is allowed as cause to. So they could just say, well, you just were suspicious looking because you're walking down the street kind of funny kind of thing. Because okay. it also ties into their anti-terrorism laws where they're trying to protect their, rightfully protect their citizens against terrorist attacks, but I think this law is a little bit aggressive in trying to fight against that situation. I think it could very well be done a little bit more appropriately than what Australia has been doing with that law. But, but is that, isn't, Australia, isn't Australia enforcing that law against its own citizens? Yes. Or, okay. Everyone. Anyone who's inside of Australia. Basically, um, let's see. Yeah, because not only that, but they're also forcing tech companies to put in back doors into encrypted messaging apps too, which some have been trying to fight against that. And some has said that if this law really does push that, that they're just going to block Australia citizens from using their apps and it's I can understand why they're doing it, but on the same hand, it kind of will break encryption if there is a back door because if let's just face it, if they're able to look into it, hackers will find a way to go into it and but it seems like we're going a little too far off because right now we're talking about traveling and just. Yeah, just be very careful about what countries are going to study up on, on the laws to see what kind of encryption laws or anti-encryption laws that they have. Because, like I said, with Australia and a little bit more with Russia and China, they're very they're starting to become very anti-encryption because Russia and China are very cracking down on a lot of VPN providers who aren't allowing them to be able to or allow the country to or the government to peer into the VPN encryption channels. So again, those are probably two other countries that will have various troubles that you can get through if you have encrypted data on you. Okay. Now, in addition to uh... In addition to knowing the regulations and your rights when you're traveling and the countries that you're traveling to, mm -hmm. um, you also need to acquaint yourself with the international data security guidance. And uh, Harvard University has this leaflet that gives gives us a really nice and an encompassing uh, guideline and tips on uh, traveling with encrypted laptops or related items. Uh, so. Number one is what we talked about, which is learning about the, the country's IT laws to avoid running into trouble with the authorities. Also be ready for random checks on your laptops or accounts at ports of yeah. entry. Uh, another is to get a loaner device that requires no encryption uh, so that if you, if you hold it at immigration departments, you don't lose any critical personal information. Mm -hmm. uh, we also recommend that you travel with fewer devices. Um, because you know, yeah. If the, the more devices you have, the more scrutiny you'll you'll need. You know, if I'm traveling yeah. with a couple of laptops and some iPads and a few phones, why do you need all that stuff, right? Yeah. Um, if you must travel uh, with your data, create uh, 
create backups right before the trip and leave that backup at home just in case you lose your laptop or it gets confiscated. Um, another one which we talk about a lot is uh, to not use a single password for several for several accounts. So if you give a password for an account or for a, access to an encrypted uh, computer, you've only given them the password for that only. Mm -hmm. If they need to go further than that, they need to have those passwords for, you know, uh, all the other services that you have. So you don't have to provide that, right? Mm -hmm. um, another recommendation is to have remote tracking on your devices so that you can, you can always know where it is. Um, if you have high risk confidential information, it needs to be reported, right? Um, also, you need to run an antivirus pre and post trip to ensure that you're safe at all times. Make sure that nobody had yep. anything in there where it was in their possession. Uh, check the content of your data <laughs> and documents to ensure that they're not against the government of the country that you are visiting. Right. Yep. One of the things that we uh, that we uh, talked about is the regular, you know, the types of software, for example, like in, in the United States, there's a executive order 13. 026, you know, it includes photo optical equipment, laptop, over the radio, uh, photo electric communication, ammunition software, right? Mm -hmm. So all that stuff, you, you, it's not allowed here, right? No. So, you know, so know that before you, before you decide to travel. Now, each country will have its own list. And if you're traveling with that data for that purpose, know the laws of that country that you're traveling to. Yep. And it's also important to know that if you're a U.S. citizen and you're coming back from another country, that many of the uh, protections of the Constitution, especially the Fourth Amendment, are kind of weaker at the borders. So that even though they can't deny you to enter the country, but they could detain you and question you longer if you have certain devices or certain encrypted data that they may want to look at before letting you in. It, it's kind of like a gray area because many people will try to plead the fifth or may try to say that you have to have a warrant to look at this certain data. But again, because you're at the border before you enter in the country, those protections don't always apply to the, even to citizens and right. they know that and they take advantage of that so like you said probably the best thing to do is while you're traveling to travel with as little as possible um, I also suggest that probably what you would what you should do is probably so when you're traveling say from the US to another country when you get to the other country after you go through the customs, kind of just factory wipe your phone just to make sure no malware gets put in because there are some side load attacks both on Android and Apple phones that the country could use to inject malware to spy on you. And the best way to go against that is just a factory reset and just wipe everything off. What you could do if you're worried about losing data is first make a cloud back a cryptic cloud backup before you leave, and then when you get to the destination, you can restore from the cloud encrypted cloud backup to your device. So that way you're not traveling with the data as you're going from point A to point B, and do the same thing when you're going back into from your visited country to your home country. Just have a cloud backup, encrypted cloud backup, go over and then restore from the backup. Um, and especially here at the U.S., um, you know, you may be asked to decrypt data at the border encrypt. crossing, right? So, decrypt, to, to yeah. De decrypt, right? So you can give access to it. And we know how invasive Homeland Security has become since the Patriot Act has passed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, with also with the tighter controls on immigration, um, 
you know, the, the Homeland Security guards will sometimes ask for, you know, for passwords and other social media credentials. So if you don't have that stuff on your phone to begin with, like we said, you know, wipe before you travel. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, when you get back home, then go ahead and, 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 and put your, your data back on your phone because you can just use, you know, you need a phone just to communicate while you're visiting any country. Yeah. You don't need really necessarily have access to all your files and and services and, and, and pictures and all that. Um, another another uh, point is you can also use a VPN, right? Because even if you're you're communicating encrypted data, it, it within inside a VPN, within a VPN tunnel, the you know they won't know, right? Uh, the only thing is depends on which VPN provider you use yeah. because you can go to that provider and ask for credentials and ask for you know logs of traffic and all that. Because, so yeah, especially like I said with Russia, they really cracked down a lot of VPN providers and blocked a ton of VPNs who refused to share the data with the government. So if you're in Russia, you the only VPN providers that are able to be used in within Russia's borders are the ones that share data with the government. Mm-hmm. So VPNs aren't always the best option right? unless you're going to a country that's not Russia or China where mm-hmm. they would force the providers to share the data with them. Mm-hmm. So that's just a little caveat with that VPN thing there. Um, another point is to avoid carrying external storage devices, right? Yeah. Um, that also raises eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually it's because they're, they're also easier to lose and easy, easier to steal. Yeah. So that's, that's another, another, um, and plus with, when you're coming into the U S they could just say, you're not allowed to have these USB devices and you can't really fight against them because, you know, they kind of have the power to say what you can bring and what you can't bring into the country. Yeah. So they can say, you know, we're confiscating this because yeah. you're not allowed we don't to have know what's it. On it. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. I, I know on for, for laptops, for example, as long as you, you're able to turn them on, mm-hmm. if, if they're off, all they can ask you is to turn them turn on. on. You don't yeah. have to log in here. Yeah. But with a, with a USB device or external storage device, how are you going to turn it on? Turn without on. Actually yeah. turning on your computer, plug it in and show that, hey, this is only a, you know, a hard, an pictures, hard yeah, hard. with a yeah. bunch of pictures. Yeah. Right. Um, I remember hearing a suggestion about these external devices is if you absolutely have to have them, when you're in the other country before you're coming back in to your home country, what you could do is just physically mail that device back to your home. That right. way... You don't have to worry about the customs. And if someone within the packaging company or the carrier company opens it up and looks at it, they won't be able to look at it because everything inside of there is encrypted. So, Right. Um, another point is using Wi-Fi at, you know, at ports and at terminals, right? Those, are, those open Wi-Fi networks, we've talked about that before. Mm-hmm. As much as you can, avoid using them because those are the easiest to crack. Usually, there's yep. very minimal security, and and people that give that monitor or that you know that that control the security of those uh, Wi-Fi uh, networks are the ones that could be going to capture the information that you're communicating yeah. over that Wi-Fi network, right? Yep. So avoid that if, if you don't, unless it's an emergency. Yeah. You know, and even is, then, VPN, yeah, right? use a reliable VPN. <laughs> reliable VPN. Yeah, because right? not all VPNs are tr- are the same. Because right, some are worse than others, especially those free VPNs. Because again, if you don't pay for it, you are the product. You are the product, exactly. Exactly. Um, another pointer is. Uh, if you have a cloud backup before you travel, when you come back, wipe the data off of your device, off of your laptop, mm-hmm. and reinstall from that that, that cloud, cloud backup. backup that you had. Right, so you can mm-hmm. eliminate the 
if any any possibility of having any data that you don't want on there, like back doors or any malware mm -hmm. or any tracking software, right? Um, that's very important. Uh, there's a, a few list of countries, a, a list of a few countries here that that are uh, really don't care about uh, data privacy. I know we we hacked on China and on Russia, but Belarus, Burma, China, Hungary, Iran, Kazakhstan, Moldova, Morocco, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Tunisia, and the Ukraine. All these countries are, they're known to be, you know, very invasive. Yeah. Um, and they they don't care about your privacy. So if you are traveling to any of these countries, follow those tips that we talked about. And, yep. you know, again, it, it, we always talk about the concept of defense and depth. Right, it's not just one thing that you'll do; it's a multiple of things that you mm -hmm. make it harder for people to invade your privacy or to add any type of malware that might hinder the performance of your device or or steal your data and, and jeopardize your your digital well-being. Yeah, and and if you notice that most of those countries that you listed are also clients of NSO Group, so that <laughs> should tell you a lot about <laughs> about <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Do you have anything else to add to this, Carl? No, I think that's that should sum it up. Just be kind of very cautious about what you're bringing when you're traveling. Minimize any of your data that you can. Just bring just the bare necessities. Encrypt backups. And then just obey any laws that or the countries you're in because the last thing you need is to make a scene somewhere else and get arrested and thrown in jail for who knows how long, just because you didn't agree with a request. And we're going to have a couple of links of these articles in the description where you can go over in depth, especially the different uh, suggestions that they go into a little bit more in details than we did. So if there's nothing else, that will just end this episode, and we hope to see you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.